And grace be unto you and peace from God the Father Almighty and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The word pastor means shepherd. And this passage is not only descriptive of Jesus who fulfilled God's will in his life and death, but it is also a passage which, which confronts Christian pastors and teachers. The Christian ministry is never really a profession, but a calling. It's not a job, but a service. It is at the same time protecting the flock and seeking the lost, caring for those who already belong to the sheepfold and seeking those who are not yet of the fold, but are still sheep of the Lord. And certainly this pandemic has placed many roadblocks in our way to fulfilling Christ's commission to go out into the world, whether it be from just being separated from our friends, family, or fellow parishioners, or fear that because we try to remain in fellowship, we might bring the disease right to their doorstep. And I believe there have been times in our lives where we feel we are the hired hand, the one who comes to work, goes through the motions, and goes home at the end of the day. No harm, no foul. And this is something that I have been struggling with and have shared with a few of you as I find myself out of my element in not being able to be in person with the flock of the church because of health concerns on both sides of the fence. While nursing homes and hospitals have restricted access to many visitors for fear that the wolf of the pandemic would come in and take away the sheep, many of us in the role of pastor have struggled with not being able to minister to those most in need. And even when we are allowed access, there are other things that keep us away, but not for lack of trying. And recently I went to visit a member in the hospital and made it through the pastor police to the emergency room where the member was resting. As I went to enter the room, the nurse explained that the person had been infected with COVID and advised against entering. So this was probably one of the most difficult things for me to embrace as your pastor. And out of the grace of God, the member was sleeping. So I said prayers for him at the door. And many of you know that I am one who wants to put hands on, offer solace, and provide comfort to you in your time of need. And I take my calling as your shepherd with utmost reverence. But ministering over the phone really doesn't cut it. What I have come to realize, though, is that it's not about me. It's about sharing the relationship that I have with Christ with you. We hold out hope that God will send healing amongst us and we will find a way to shepherd each other as we are all a member of Christ's flock. A story I read about a Catholic priest in China highlights that even in adversity, maintaining our faith in God is what takes us to new levels of insight. But not only maintaining our faith, but sharing our faith boldly with those around us. A water prison is a small, dark dungeon with a narrow concrete table in the center of the room. And the room is flooded so that only the table is above the water. And the guards would put stubborn prisoners on the table every morning tied back to back. And they would sit all day on that concrete table with no space to move. And this could go on for 40 days or until the men went crazy or signed a confession or fell into the water and drowned. Now this Catholic priest was put into the water prison and his companion tied to him complained and cursed from the first day. But the priest decided to meditate and pray. And before long, the non-Christian became curious as to how his partner could be so serene and began to ask him questions. The priest took the opportunity to explain the Christian faith until the man asked, 
as Philip had been asked by the Ethiopian eunuch, what is to prevent me from being baptized? He was baptized in the waters of that water prison. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So what does it mean to be a good shepherd? What does it mean to be a good pastor? And what does it mean to be a steward of the good news? It means that all things will not always go the way we have planned. Circumstances can change on a dime. And sometimes you baptize someone in a prison cell flooded with water. We affirm baptism while waist deep in a river. Whereas today, we baptize Liam in the warmth of our sanctuary. The surroundings don't mean a thing. What matters most is Jesus in our hearts, and no matter how challenging the situation we find ourselves in, Jesus is at the root of our care. It's not for us to decide who we take into our care. Jesus has set that out all before us. It is for us to care and minister to those God brings into our lives and do it as best we can. We are called to put the attitude of Christ in our toolbox, venturing out into the world to exhibit what Christ did during his ministry. And Christ called all to a relationship with God and did so as the most humble servant shepherding away, inspiring disciples across the millennia. Being a good shepherd or pastor and steward means joyfully being a sheep of Jesus' flock. It means we enter through his gate, for Jesus is the way to salvation. We know his voice and follow him. He cares for us, keeping us safe. And when we wander away which we know we all do too often, he comes searching for us. And these are wonderful, comforting images, but this passage includes one other challenging thought. The good shepherd decides who is in the sheepfold. We do not. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. And the Pharisees and disciples alike, although they knew who the chosen ones of who, who, although they thought they were the chosen ones of God. But the shepherd is telling them and telling us there will be one flock, one shepherd, and it is God and Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit, not us, who bring together that flock. This is an especially powerful image for us in these times of dissension, unrest, and violence. We are entreated to embrace that not everyone is like us or necessarily holds the same beliefs. Additionally, as I mentioned before, it is God in Christ Jesus who puts people in our midst with the understanding we will love our neighbor and enemy alike. Knowing this thought is terribly naive, I envision a church, a community, and a nation that can come together hearing the call of the shepherd to invite us into the gate, to share the comfort of being beside still waters and not dwelling in the shadow of death. We have been freed from that valley because of Christ's agony on the cross. The dare for today is to decide whether we are our hired hand or can we lay down our lives for the service in the name of Christ. We can model the life of the shepherd and guide others to hear the shepherd calling us by name, calling us to welcome all that challenges us and promising all who obey his commandments abide in him and he abides in us. And by this way, we know he abides in us by the spirit he has given us. For us, being a shepherd will be challenging and rewarding at the same time. The theologian William Barclay likens the good shepherd to a good doctor. When people speak of the good doctor, they are thinking behind, beyond the doctor's medical skills to his or her kindness and compassion. 
in the picture of Jesus as the good shepherd, there is loveliness as well as strength and power. I believe we all have that compassion, kindness, strength, and power to share. And like our Savior, it will not always be welcomed. This is our reality and one we don't care to accept. But as Jesus suffered on the cross, his love and commitment continues to welcome everyone into the flock. The vacancy announcement for Shepherd is always open. Open to everyone and open to those who are willing to put the wolf behind them, guaranteeing a place in the house of the Lord forever. Amen.